A production cost report is the key document that management uses to understand the activities in a department. It shows both production quantity and cost data. In order to complete a production cost report, the company must perform the following four steps. We will discuss each of these steps in detail in this module. As I just stated, a production cost report is prepared for each department and it shows both the production quantity and cost data. For example, in producing Eggo waffles, Kellogg Company prepares three production cost reports, one for the mixing department, one for the baking department, and one for the freezing and packaging department. This is the data for the mixing department at Kellogg Company for the month of June. We will use this information to complete a production cost report for the mixing department. It is very important that you separate the data pertaining to units from cost. Physical units are the actual units to be accounted for during a period, regardless of work performed. To keep track of these units, add the units started or transferred into production during the period to the units in process at the beginning of the period. This amount is referred to as the total units to be accounted for. The total units then are accounted for by the output of the period. The output consists of the units transferred out during the period plus any units in process at the end of the period. This amount is referred to as the total units accounted for. The next slide illustrates the flow of physical units for Kellogg's mixing department for the month of June. Total units to be accounted for include units in production at the beginning of the period, and that would be the work in process beginning balance, plus units started or transferred into production during the period. Total units accounted for include the units that were transferred out during the period, plus units in process at the end of the period. Again, that would be the work in process ending balance. The records indicate that the mixing department must account for 900,000 units. Of this amount, 700,000 units were transferred to the baking department and 200,000 were still in process. Once the physical flow of the units is established, Kellogg must measure the mixing department's productivity or units processed in terms of equivalent units. Then the mixing department adds materials at the beginning of the process and incurs conversion cost uniformly during the process. As a result, we need two computations for equivalent units, one for materials and one for conversion cost. The equivalent unit calculation was actually calculated in the previous module or learning objective. Now that we know the equivalent units of production, we can actually calculate the unit production cost, which is step three. Unit production costs are costs expressed in terms of equivalent units of production. When equivalent units of production are different for materials and conversion cost, we compute three unit costs, one for materials, one for conversion, and the third is for the total manufacturing cost. Remember, the basic idea in process costing is to add all the costs incurred in a department during a period and to spread those costs uniformly to all units processed in that department. In process costing, manufacturing costs are assigned to equivalent units rather than to physical units. Step one and two focused on data pertaining to units. In step three, we compute the unit production cost. We need the total cost for both materials and conversion, as well as equivalent units, which was calculated in step two. Let's focus on our material cost. We began work in process with $50,000 of direct material cost, and we occurred an additional $400,000. So we have a total of $450,000 in material cost. Right. If we take a look at our conversion cost, we began the period with $35,000 and we incurred an additional $170,000, so we have conversion cost of $205,000. The last thing I just want to comment on is total cost are $655,000. This can be found by adding the beginning work in process 
plus the costs that were incurred during the month, or adding materials and conversion costs together. Right. As I just stated, we began the period with $50,000 of direct material cost. During the month of June, we added an additional $400,000 of materials for a total materials cost of $450,000. If we take our total material cost of $450,000 and divide by the equivalent units of material, which is $900,000, again, that was obtained in step two, we arrive at a unit materials cost of 50 cents. We're going to do a similar exercise for the conversion cost. We know that we began the period with $35,000 of conversion cost. During the month of June, we added an additional $170,000 of conversion cost for a total of $205,000. If we take our total conversion cost and divide by our equivalent units, 820,000, which was determined in step two, we arrive at a unit conversion cost of 0.25 or 25 cents. All right, after we calculate our unit material cost and our unit conversion cost, we can then calculate our total manufacturing cost per unit, which is simply the sum of our unit material cost and our conversion cost. In this instance, it's 75 cents. We are now ready to determine the cost of goods transferred out of the mixing department to the baking department and the cost in the ending working process. Kellogg charged total cost of $655,000 to the mixing department in June. In step four, we prepare a cost reconciliation schedule to assign these costs to the units that were transferred out to the baking department and to the units that remain in our ending working process inventory. In order to complete this schedule, we need the equivalent units from Step 2, and we also need the cost per equivalent unit, which we found in Step 3. All right, so let's focus on what was transferred out. If you go back to Step 2, we know that we transferred out 700,000 units, and our total manufacturing cost per unit is $0.75. Cents. So we're going to allocate $525,000 to the units that were transferred out. And again, that's simply the product of 700,000 times 75 cents. When it comes to our work in process, I want you to go back to step two and obtain the equivalent units for both materials and conversion cost. And if you remember, it was 200,000 and 120,000. And you're also going to go back to step three to determine the unit material cost, which was 50 cents, and the unit conversion cost, cost which was 25 cents. If you simply multiply 200,000 by 50 cents, you arrive at a materials cost of 100,000. And if you take your conversion cost, which is found by taking 120,000 multiplied by 25 cents, you arrive at 30,000. If you add your material and conversion cost together, your work in process at June 30th is $130,000. The last thing that you want to do is you want to add up what was transferred out, 525,000, to 130,000, which gives us $655,000. So this reconciliation shows that the total cost accounted for equal the total cost to be accounted for. At this point, Kellogg is ready to prepare the production cost report for the mixing department. This report is an internal document for management that shows both production quantity and cost data for a production department. This, shot, this slide shows the completed production cost report for the mixing department and identifies the four steps used in preparing it. So you've already calculated the equivalent units when you completed part one. So in part two, we need to calculate the unit cost and prepare a cost reconciliation. I selected this problem because it's pretty easy in the sense that we have no beginning work in process. So we have our materials, our material cost, which is $65,475, and we have our conversion cost, which is the sum of our labor and our manufacturing overhead, or in this case, $51,045. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video. One final comment is that companies often use a combination of process and job order cost system, which is called operations costing. 
I selected this problem because it focuses on equivalent units, unit production cost, and the assignment of cost to the goods transferred out, and in the ones that are in work in process. Essentially, these are the key calculations in a process cost system. I selected this problem because the focus is on the preparation of the production report. The solutions to the problems and exercises from this module or learning objective will be provided in the next video.